Oh, landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess, and this video is an advertisement for root beer. Now I want a glass of milk. That's root beer, right? But today we're here to take a look at eh, the Gin Chubby Knife Kit. Now, full transparency, these guys sent this to me to check out for you guys. I didn't pay for it. Do with that information what you will. But they already sent me the Captain Knife Kit. And I put that one together, and it wound up being a really good daily driver for me for my week of carrying it. Let's flick the bean. Eh. You know, you got a three and a half inch D2 steel blade, and this thing ate four hours of abuse, just nonstop cardboard cuts. Still held an edge. Like, I was able to strop that back to shaving again. Uh, a little bit impressed by that. They also sent me the lockback kit in G10, the Blades G10. It's a lockback, which was cool. I never had a lockback apart before. And this is a great tool for teaching safety, a little bit of a novelty, a fidget toy. And they also sent the Space Exploration Flipper. Now, they also sent me extras of these that I gave away, and the recipients seemed to enjoy them. But, you know, this is everything they sent me so far. Now, with the uh, Captain Knife Kit, if you're not a huge fan of the uh, Evil Knievel theme here, or Captain America theme, they do offer other colors now. There's black, there's translucent blue, there's another color that I can't remember. But you got options. And that translucent is a big deal for me because I've been asking so long to start seeing translucent colors instead of Ultim. I do not like the way Ultim looks. It looks gross. But that, uh, that gave me a desire. Like the first time I saw it, I was like, we need translucent with colors. Now let's get into this thing. Eh. We've got translucent scales. All right. And they're blue. So I'm really happy to see this. Jen, we're kind of one of the first guys I've seen do this. I think I saw one other one somewhere else, but this is extremely cool. And we got our blade right here, and you can kind of see how small the blade is um, right out of the gate. And it's not a reservoir tip, but eh, eh, yeah, you guys get it. So we got we got those parts right there. We have got our box of bits and pieces. So we got these guys right here. And one thing to note. Um, this thing comes with a T6 and a T8 driver, the same ones that came with the Captain Knife Kit. And uh, I reach for these before I reach for any of my other knife tools when I don't have my uh, NAPS tool laying around uh, right next to me. These things work pretty good. There's one part with this kit that's a little bit of a headache with it, but these things work pretty good. We've also got our instruction manual, which uh, it's, a, it's a long roadmap. But on the other side, you've got your... Uh, your parts right there, you got your parts list, and you got the exploded view. And, and Jen, if you guys see this, a small poster with the exploded view of the knife you're building, it'd be kind of cool. Like, I would put that up on my wall. I would. So we got this right here. And we have got pivot lube. I got like four of these floating around now from doing all these kits. We have got our small parts. We have got our liners and a microfiber. So they gave us a little snack. But let's get these small parts dumped out. And some of these are very small, so be careful when you're dumping them out. Like a really flat surface or something with some sides to catch these things would be ideal. But, you know, we got our liners right here. And something cool is, you know, when I saw the, the translucent and the clear scales, my first thought was indeed skeletonize everything to within an inch of its life. Uh, someone had a bright idea to cut gin out on this, which... That's a great idea, and if I ever get to design something with somebody, I know what I'm going to do with that idea. But let's start putting this together. And step one, we start by placing the frame inserts over the holes um, right back here on the right-hand liner, and then put two screws in there. So this will be the right-hand liner, and you want to make sure that you've got this side facing the inside. So the spacers are going to go right here. If you've got it on this low side, that's the wrong side. So be careful when you're doing that. You just basically want the dingus end right here to be facing up while you put your uh, liners on or your spacers. And we got the first barrel spacer right here. And the screws you use for this are tiny. Just a bit of word of warning. They are tiny. When I say tiny, I mean tiny. And... My hands are shaking. Father Time is hitting me with the buckle end of his belt. My eyesight ain't what it used to be. So, like, I've done this a few times now because I've had takes that went bad. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm getting used to dealing with this. But, yeah, these things are tiny. They're fiddly. This is actually the fastest I've got one in there. So, 
if your hands are smaller than mine or more steady than mine, you're going to be just fine. But for me, it takes a little bit of effort to get there. We'll get our other screw in place here. This is what I'm talking about now. And these are the only ones that are this challenging to deal with. So I've had to kind of try something different on everyone. Like that one, I was able to set it, kind of set it sideways in there and then get it stood up with the, uh, the dingus into this. So you'll have to play around with it a little bit. But now that we got these spacers on here, we're going to set our backspacer in. And that's going to be put in here like so. So it's going to look like this right here because this is the bottle opener on this dingus end. Now we're going to drop our pivot in place. And the pivot, there's a flat spot um, right here that corresponds to a flat spot on your uh, pivot. So you line those up and you send it home from this side, from the outside. And you send it home. So that's your step one instructions. Um, we move on to step two. Flip this bad boy open. And you're going to assemble the right hand side scale, which is going to be the one without the uh, pocket clip on it, I believe. And yeah, so you can line it up using the... Uh, no, it is the one with the pocket clip on it. So it's going to be the one with the pocket clip on it, but you can use the uh, the pivot as a guide and these two screws back here as a guide. And then you're going to take the screws that have the round tops on them and drop them in and send them home. It's the round tops. The flat tops, they will technically fit, but they, uh, they aren't the right ones. So you'll take your T6 driver right here. And you'll send these guys home. Like so. Don't go crazy over tightening them. I don't know if this is acrylic or resin. If it's acrylic, you can crack them if you go too crazy. But your next stop is going to be um, the stop pin is in place. Um, no, the stop pin. It's this round dingus right here. So this stops your blade from opening too far. You'll see how in just a second here. But you're going to place one of your ceramic bearings and you're going to do this flat side right here down. Let's... So there's a difference between that side and this side. So this side's going to face down. You drop that in place. You take one of these two washers. Um, yep. One of these two washers right here and drop it in on top of that. This is where your pivot lube comes into play. You open this up and put absolutely the tiniest drop humanly possible on here. Less is more. All right. A full size drop is way, way too much. So, our next stop is going to be uh, place the blade over the pivot, keep it in a slightly open position. Now, I can show you how a liner lock do how it do. So, the liner lock's closed. You can see the stop pin right here doing its thing, and you'll flip that thing and it swings open. And then, uh, the stop pin stops the blade at its fully open position, and your liner catches uh, this right here, and then you can press the liner down, and it lets it close. So that's how your liner lock works, and you don't want to have this open while you're doing this. I tried that a second ago on my last take. It didn't do right, so I'm not doing that again. But now we're going to drop our next bearing on there, and again, the flat side is going to be down. We're going to put our next uh, washer on there. And again, another tiny, tiny drop of pivot lube. I've already done this like four times now, so that's not going to help me a whole lot. But then we're going to set our next uh, liner down on here. And you can use this recess in here as your guide. Because that's where your, uh, your uh, bearings and washers sit. Now it's all clicked into place. And we... Uh, we're going to put the pivot screw in, and that's the screw with the wider head, and this one takes your uh, your T8, focus, but that's going to go right here in this hole, now we got that started, you take your orange one, your T8, 
and send this one home. If you can get, make this cooperate. So I'm able to actually set this down and get it started a thread or so. And you can see her sticking out of here. So your green is T6 and your orange is T8. And this is the only screw you use the T8 on. And then uh, once you get these backs, the, the backspacer screws in, which again are the tiniest ones in human history, you can check to see if it opens and closes smoothly before you put the last piece on while well, you can still adjust that. Now, most normal knives, your uh, pivot screw is gonna be exposed so you can get to it and tune it easily. This one, however, you're gonna have that covered up when you put this when you put the last scale on. So I'm just making sure I've got all the parts put together properly. And, and these things do have an advantage over the first couple you put on. The uh, the liner right here gives you a little bit extra purchase to stand up in and uh, keep it from wandering too far before you screw it in. You can see how much faster that was. But now you can take the flipper tab and let's flick the bean. Eh! Yeah, it's tuned good. It opens and closes smoothly. Um, you check for uh, blade rattle side to side, up and down for lock rock. I'm not feeling any of that. So now I can, uh, I'm going to tighten this a hair more and see if that hurts it any. No, it does not. So we're in good shape there. Now we can drive the last scale home. You use your, uh, your big hole and your pivot screw as a guide along with the uh, small screws back here. We're going to get our next set of round tops. Round top and round top. Those go in there like so and drive those home. And yeah, like they, these things do come in other colors too because this is supposed to be designed after a bee. And uh, you'll see, I'm, I'm going to link off to this on Amazon. You'll get to take a better look at that and the options that you have. Um, so all this is put together now. Our next step is going to be to drop the, the pocket clip on here. And the pocket clip goes in these recesses right here. It's only on one side. Unfortunately, it's not reversible for you guys. Now, the easiest way to do this I've, I've found so far is just to drop them in place. And once they are in place here... You can set this down and you already have them lined up with the holes and then they become a lot easier to send home like send one screw part way home send one screw part way home and then you can tighten these bad boys down and you don't have to do that whole fiddly thing with them uh, going a whole bunch of places on you and rocking back and forth and falling out so we got the pocket clip right here. Retention on that's good. And then we got a little skull cracker slash glass breaker. Just a pointy dingus end right here that you can screw in. It's optional, but we're doing all the things here. And I think that's as tight as we're going to get it. But congratulations, you have finished building the knife. And uh, the flipper tab right here is a couple of tiny antennas. So if you get the black and yellow kit that looks like a bee, you get the full effect. You got wings, you got the antenna right here, you got the bottle opener. Um, so let's flick the bean again. Eh. And this thing is completed. And you can see the gin logo through here. And through here, you can kind of see the inner workings of the knife. There's your liner lock. Um, you can see that. And then, of course, you got your pocket clip and your liner. So let's see if she'd be sharp out of the box. Now, let's see how quickly I mess this cut up. Oh, that is a good edge. That is a really good edge out of the box, just like the Captain Knife Kit. This one's a little harder for me to cut with, just because I'm not used to so little real estate that's sharpened. But what's going to happen now is I am going to carry this alongside my regular review knife for a week and dual wield these things and just see how it does as a very small fifth pocket style knife. Um, I don't have a fifth pocket at work, so I'll, I'll figure out how to make do. But... Yeah, I mean, everything about this is as solid as the uh, Captain Knife Kit feeling. It's just very, very small. So, uh, you know, I don't normally have small knives. And at some point, this will go through Cardboard Slayer. And we're going to struggle with that, but it's going to happen. But that is the completed knife, and that's how you put it together. 
So let's take a second and thank Jim Knives in the comments for making this happen for us. And, uh, you know, uh, subscribers, you guys are awesome. Y'all keep coming in. I appreciate it so much. I apologize for missing the last live stream. I physically couldn't do it. But comments, I love some feedback. Let me know what you think about this. And all that being said, y'all have a nice day.